Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 23rd of September 2013. So in today's news, we have Norishan Heroic, some blue tweets which are on a whole bunch of very interesting topics and actually give a lot of good talking points, and also a very, very cool poll that I found in MMO Champion, which I'd like to run by a lot of you and uh, see what you guys think. So let's get into it. Now for Norishan, they are planning changes on Heroic. We don't know exactly what they are, but basically there were some really strange things going on where people were apparently having to, I know this sounds weird, but four heal and then Zerg the boss, which sounds ridiculous. Now there was a whole bunch of changes through this fight on the PTR, and one of them was there was like this nerf thing you start off with at the start that was greater than just the, uh, the DPS loss from being corrupted, but apparently they like took that back. So yeah, now they're, I'm not really sure how they're going to change it, but they basically, it seems like they want to make it so it can't be Zerg. It's going to be a slight increase in difficulty, not to the point where it's harder than say Shav Pride, but a slight increase. So yeah, it's interesting because changing a core boss like this in a major way is, it's really quite the thing and with the r sort of whole race to world first, there might need to be some relearning or composition adjustments to actually down this boss again. That said, for the for those guys that are up there, I don't really think this is going to be a massive thing, but it, re it really did seem like when they were posting this in the, like the forums, the blue, they were really taking it seriously. Like really seriously. So yeah, it does seem to be quite the thing. Now the next uh, next sort of thing is blue tweets, and they are covering the item squish, raid finder, PvP, and uh, some other stuff. So let's get into it. Now the item squish, pretty much they said that everything is going to feel the same, but with smaller numbers. Now someone was asking them if it, you know, saying that it didn't really make sense to squish the numbers if we were still going to be jumping, say, 30 item levels per content patch. And I think what they don't get is that Blizzard still wants the power deltas between content patches to be large at least for PvE content. Of course, it doesn't really work the same way for PvP, because then people get disproportionately powerful. It doesn't really work in a competitive PvP environment. So, um, yeah, instead of... Yeah, what they need to do is still, like, just keep up the meaningful increases that they have been doing. Like, moving from normal patch 5.2 to normal patch 5.3, or, sorry, 5.4, feels fantastic. You get such a noticeable increase in power with every single bit of gear you get. It makes your week-to-week, -week, you know, drops and stuff far more interesting. And it also means that you, you really do care about itemization in the pieces and there's a lot more thought behind it and it leads to more interesting choices. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with them, say, just normalizing and reducing, you know, all the item levels, but still increasing them by a large amount every time. Uh, they did say, of course, that... And this, the, the item squish now would buy them at least a few expansions. And that, that's a direct quote from Blizzard a while back. They did say all that they really wanted was to buy them four or five expansions, not be the one and only solution, because they still want to maintain people being powerful as they move from patch to patch and expansion to expansion. So honestly, I think that's pretty great. The item squish will make things a little bit more manageable. It also makes things more readable, because uh, it's a little bit harder to distinguish, say, 100 or no, 587,000 and, uh, I don't know, 812 DPS from, say, 200, I, was, was even the first number I said? You see, there's the problem. The numbers are so fucking big that it's just hard to get stuff in your head. You know, back in, say, the Wrath days, it was, you know, this person did 3,000 DPS, this person did 4,000 DPS, this boss had 2 million health, or 3 million, or 4 million health. That was way easier to sort of compute in your head. But now the numbers are just getting to the point where it makes everything more complicated, and that sucks because it makes uh, it makes it less accessible. And but when I say less accessible, it's not really in a fun way, if you know what I mean. So it's kind of shitty. Anyway, now let's move on about raid finder. Now they said that they have thought that punishing people who AFK during encounters in LFR is um, like a thing they could do. But the problem is false positives. Even if only a small percent um, of, like this would have, you know, false positives would happen, it would still screw over a massive amount of people because a lot of people do LFR. And the thing is, even if only one percent, half a percent of the LFR people were having this problem, even less, still think how many support like calls and stuff to GMs that would be. It would be ridiculous. So, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's hard, but equally it really does suck when you're in, say, an LFR, and it wipes because there's lazy sites that just are AFK during the boss. Especially it happens on the last boss of the wing, because even if they're kicked out, they're still going to get their loot, so... It's, yeah, it's a bit of a shitty situation sometimes with LFR. Now also, so they said that they won't be gating any more severely than they have been, and the reason for this is because they want to lure people into organized raiding, and not beat them into it with a stick, which... Honestly, when you're trying to, you know, sell a product, that's what this game is, beating your players with a stick is not a good thing. Now, next up, we have PvP. Um, so, yes, this is about bloody coins. 
Now, the bloody coins only drop from killing blows, and the reason they did this is so that it's not feasible to make a large raid to kill people on the Timeless Isle, since members of that raid would only just be competing for killing blows. But I think just this sort of sparks off a bit more discussion on just the whole bloody coin and PvP aspect of the Timeless Isles. I think on a PvP server, the Isle just wouldn't be fun. It's just too, you know, there's too many people of different factions in the same place. I know it's a PvP server and people sign up for that, but I just think the density is way too high and people are probably not having a great deal of fun. You know, you, you kind of need to band together to survive, but then if you band together, you're kind of getting screwed over for killing blows with your bloody coins, so... Uh, I don't know, I think it's a bit of a weird situation with content like that and PvP areas. Like, the majority of the QQ I've seen about the Time Isle has been from the uh, perspective of people on PvP servers. So there you go, now let's talk about some miscellaneous stuff. And uh, yes, good old Shao Hao. So it's meant to be a long-term thing that pays off. Uh, pays off well in the end, the payoff being that amount. Now, personally, I'm cool with this. See, I'd rather chip away um, at it over time and then in two months have something that I really feel like I've accomplished and earned. And I think one of the problems at the minute is they've really trained players for instant gratification. You know, like the way that if you don't get loot, you get a loot bag, you also have a bonus roll. There's, there's lots of instantaneous things, which is great. I don't you know, I'm gonna say it, it is, that's good. But, um, in a lot of ways anyway. But uh, it does sort of encourage people to be a bit impatient. So, um, yeah, some people's reaction to this content has just been to grind it to death and burn themselves out. Rather than just say, well, I'll do this over three months. I think, you know, it's it's just about trading players, and I think Blair, Blizzard did say that they're trying to train players a little bit out of the instant gratification, you know, OMG grind kind of sort of scenario that they've got a lot of people into, and the Time of Silence is definitely a step towards that. Now next, a poll. So I was browsing through all the different sites and blue trackers and things uh, doing today's show, and I found a really cool poll in MO Champion. Now it's not massive in terms of the sample size, but the data is, and also the data is kind of skewed towards the people who regularly visit WoW news sites, so that's, you know, the more hardcore players, I suppose. Now the question was, uh, which of the PvP zones were people's favourite? And I've also, I think the results are pretty guessable. So most people said Time the Siles, then 5.2, then 5.1, then 5.0, and 5.3 at the back. Now I think the... 5.3's location, it's not a, it's not really a comment on the quality of 5.3, it's more on the quantity. There's not, you know, I think that was really good content, but there just wasn't enough of it for it really to be called a favourite. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting, I think 5.0 definitely deserves the place at the bottom because I think it was awful. Um, I didn't really play, well I sort of, I played at the tail end of that patch of the 5.0, 5.1 cycle. Which was okay, but Jesus Christ, even you know, moving into the game at that stage, not only did I have all the 5.0 rep, but I had the 5.1 rep as well, which was ridiculous. So yeah, my, my question to you guys is, leave in the comments, what uh, what do you think, in, the, in you know, in what order of um, Time the Siles, 5.3, uh, 5.2, 5.1, and 5.0, rank them in order from best to worst, I'd be interested to know what you think. And with that, I'm going to end the show, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>